Welcome to Track Time by Race Crews. For today's test, I have 55 feet of track, curves, boosters, and bridges. We're going to be testing cars from the 2016 C case assortment. All of these cars came from those cases. I pick the number of cars I'm going to use. I do the testing on the track. As a matter of fact, I'm testing 24 cars today. I'm using these old style power boosters from the 90s. They're adjustable. Up first, I'm going to do the Nissan Fairlady Z. It's the very first time that this car has been released. No loops. All they got to do is come out of the booster straight and hang on in the curves. Oh, he got about halfway, and it looked like the booster flipped him upside down. I will be giving all of the cars more than one chance. Let's see how he comes out of the booster. Oh, this time, he stayed right side up. But when he came out of the booster, he popped up and he slid down the side rail. After the boosters, I'm using track with high sidewalls. That helps the car stay in the lane after they've been propelled from the booster. The Nissan Fairlady Z is a beautiful car. He's making it through two boosters, but it's that third one that keeps giving him problems. I'm going to put another camera down here on the track. Let's see if we can see what's going on. Here he goes. First curve, boom, straight out of the booster. Boom, straight out of the booster. Up, oh, failed again. Let's check out that other camera angle. He's getting twisted sideways. Winds up up on a rail. You know what else I can try? That booster's adjustable. Maybe if I slow it down a little bit, maybe that'll help him. This will be his last chance, though. I got other cars I want to do, too, you know. That's it. Next. Let's see, who do I pick next? How about Twin Duction? He's been in a lot of track sets and play sets. He should work on the track, but let's see how well he works on this layout. Set, go! And he's off to the races. And he's off the track. Hey, it's the grabber. Where have you been? Second chance. Ultra vest. He has a metal body. That means he's a, a little top heavy. And sometimes he has troubles in curves. Like that. At least he's getting further around the track. Let me slow down this booster a little bit. If he doesn't get further, this will be it. Well, he got further, so he's going to get another try. Let's go ahead and slow down this booster, too. Hopefully that's enough fine-tuning so that he can make it all the way around the track. He's on a roll. And he goes all the way. Hey, maybe with those adjustments, the Nissan Fairlady Z can do better. Let's give him a shot. I mean, he can't do any worse, can he? Let's see if he can make it past that other curve. Oh, yeah, he made it further. Ow! Ah! Oh! We got one car to make it all the way around. It sure would be nice to have two. Well, isn't that a familiar sight? I know he made it further around the track, but he seems to want to stay in this corner, so I'll let him stay in this corner. Let me move twin duction out of the finish block, and the next model is going to be... Toyota Supra. It's very low to the ground and usually doesn't do loops, but I don't have loops on this track, so maybe he'll do pretty good on this layout. I mean, what could go wrong? Come on, the first curve? Second chance. He's got to do better than that. Okay. He got a little bit farther. Here he comes again. Since that was the same curve, I'm going to pinch the track to see if he's nicking the edge of the curve. Maybe that'll help. Or maybe he just won't get that far. Next, Chevy Camaro Concept. Love the paint job on this car. Uh, I hope he does well. It's a great car. So far, only one car has made it all the way. Two cars have failed. Here he comes. Yes. Now, two have passed, two have failed. Mattel has been doing this thing with their Hot Wheels segment to where they'll have a then and now. So the 71 Dodge Challenger is the then and then the now is the 15 Dodge Challenger SRT. We'll do the older model first, the 71 Dodge Challenger. The model's a little skinny. The boosters can't grab it really well. Let me go ahead and speed up this booster a little bit. 
And we'll go ahead and uh, turn the Toyota Supra over so he looks nice. 71 Dodge Challenger again. I sped up that booster. Yes, it helped him get to the second booster. The third, the fourth. And he makes it all the way. Let's go ahead and set aside the old guy because now it's time for the new guy. The 15 Dodge Challenger SRT. But let's see if he can do as good as the old guy. Now the modern version of the Dodge Challenger, the SRT, is wider than the older version. And as you can see, he's perfectly sized for the boosters. Look at this one. It's hot. It's got flames. It's the 41 Willys from the HW Flame Series. Not a track car. Look how low it is to the ground. But remember, I don't have loops. So now's his chance to get to shine on the track. But I don't know. How's he going to handle the curves? How's he going to handle the boosters? Let's find out. So far, so good. And look at that. Success. Now we have Project Speeder. It's a project car. It is not finished. It also does not have protection for the front wheels. No fenders. Let's see if that affects its performance from the boosters. Project Speeder was handling the curves and boosters great until it got to this silver piece right here. That piece is what I call a coasting curve. It's actually an entry piece and it's not supposed to be used by itself. It's supposed to be connected to other pieces in the middle of the curve or the exit curve piece. Here's what it looks like up close. The entry's on the left and the exit's on the right. And see, you're supposed to connect these two together so you have a, a nice smooth curve. You can see the proper way to use it in the right corner here. Here comes Project Speeder with another chance. He can handle that curve when it's done properly. We'll look at it from this angle. Comes out smooth through the booster smooth, but this time he bounces out of the high bank curve. Here's a look at his exposed wheels. And also look at the front bumper. I wonder if that can catch on the size of the track as well. The front corners of the car are not smooth. They just stick out. Let's see if he can get further. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, the last curve. He almost makes it, but check out this move. Oh, yeah. He turns around on the track. I got to see that again. That was pretty cool. Comes around the curve, hit that silver spot, decides, I want to go through this backwards. Well, if he wants to go through it backwards, let's send him down backwards. Ta-da. <laughs> he finishes backwards. Good job. Up next, we're going to do the 12 Ford Fiesta. Check out that front bumper. It's called a splitter, pretty low to the ground. That means he can't do loops, but we ain't got no loops. It's all street track. This is the part that drags in the loops. We don't have to worry about that today. Set, go. Oh, that one spot again. Let's take a look to see if he's nicking that corner maybe. Maybe the other ones were too. It looks smooth enough, but just in case, I'm gonna flare the track out. This way, when the cars are coming around, they won't be nicking any edges. Here he comes again. Got a good run going. Oh, winds up on the rail in the last straightaway. It looks like he might be able to go all the way. And he does. The 12 Ford Fiesta joins the rest of the successful cars at the finish line. But look, I got a lot more cars to do right after this. Here we have Monta Racer. You know it's going to be a track car. Long, smooth sides. It even says track stars right on the package. New, 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 new. No! What a burn. So close. He can see the finish line. Let's see if he can make it all the way this time. He had smooth sailing the first time, and there you have it. How about the Back to the Future Time Machine Hover Mode? It has sideways wheels so that it can hover. But underneath, you can see it's got little wheels. 
Uh, maybe it can roll. That's what track time is. We test cars to see who works on the track. Well, he's got little wheels to help him roll, but the hover wheels that stick out, yeah, cause him to be too wide. He doesn't fit on the track. So he's one of those cars where it's mm, fun to drive around, fun to fly around, but he can't do anything on the track. Now we have the 90 Acura NSX, and it's another model that has a low bumper, but actually when it's a separate piece like this, see the black how it's separate from the bumper? That would be called a splitter, and that splitter is not good for loops, but let's see how it does on straight boosters and track. Well, 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 when you make the right track layout, he does all right. It's getting a little crowded down here. Let me make a little room for another row. Here we have HW Rapid Responder. <laughs> you know, this doesn't look like a uh, track car. This is the metal body version. It has a metal body, plastic base. I mean, it's a nice vehicle. I like to collect it, but track car? I don't know. What? That was a total surprise. Let's check out Frankster. You know, his mouth sticks out really far. And he, he doesn't work in the loops because that, that mouth hits the loop even before the wheels get a chance to grip the loop. Here he goes. Second chance. Wow, another surprise. This case had several beauties, like this 52 Hudson Hornet. Wow, just a really nice release. Maybe you recognize the car from Pixar Films, you know, Doc Hudson. Let's see how he races around this track. Oops, out of gas. Let's bring him back for a second chance. He's kind of skinny like that other car. The boosters just barely grip him. He's not wide enough for the boosters. Oh, he might make it. Oh, almost. Let me show you right here. Look how much room is on the side of him. He doesn't really fill the lane, whereas Monte Racer, look. There's just a little bit of wiggle room. But Hudson Hornet, there's a lot of wiggle room. It's because he's skinny. Let me adjust the boosters. See if that'll help him get all the way around the track. Now remember, these are vintage boosters. These are no longer available in stores. Here he comes. Not quite enough. Let's go ahead and turn up all the boosters all the way and see if that's going to help him. Because he's just not quite making it around as far as he needs to go. I'd surely love to see Doc Hudson make it, I mean, uh, Hudson Hornet make it all the way around. Hey, who'd you learn that from? Lightning McQueen? Well, maybe we don't need that much power in this booster. Bonk. When the cars hit the front edge of the curve like that, they cause it to separate from the track, so just tighten it up, and we're ready to go for another race. Come on, Bubba, you can do it! Oh, finally! Oh, oh, I thought he was going to make it over the hill. I'll go ahead and turn this booster back up, but remember last time, it caused him to fly over the curve. Bye bye. Nitro tailgater. So shiny. Even though the Hudson Hornet was not successful, we do have a lot of cars that have made it. What was that? He came flying around the curve. I don't know what happened at the booster. 
But you know what? We can go ahead and turn the boosters down now. I don't think Nitro Tailgater needs so much force. Let me see if I can straighten out this curve. It's a little bit to the side. If I move it here, it gives the cars a straighter shot into the curve. Sometimes you gotta do little adjustments for each car because, you know, each car is not the same weight and size, so sometimes they work like that. The 70 Plymouth AAR Cuda. He made it look easy. Let's move these guys over, start another row. Up next, we got a new Porsche, the Porsche 356A Outlaw. Another fantastic model. There was this, Hudson Hornet. Oh, what a great month it was. Smooth. This is Dogzilla. Interesting looking model. It looks more like an off-road vehicle than an on-track vehicle. One thing that's going to cause issues is the wheels stick out a bit. Not only that, there's no protection on the sides. But track time by race crews isn't just to do the cars that work. It's to find out which cars work and which ones don't. Like in this case, he actually made it through one booster. And he failed here, but other cars failed here as well. I don't know. Let's try him again. See if he can make it through that booster. Uh-oh. High profile. He flipped over the curve. Yeah, I think that'll do it for him. Let's see if I can get somebody to help knock him off the track. Well, that didn't help. I'll put Monteracer back at the finish. And uh, nope, Dogzilla. You gotta stay right here. Mattel says this one's a track star. Great gas speed. Really? Track star? Look at those wheels. Open wheelers. They stick out. No fender protection. I don't know. We'll find out. Sure is nice looking though. But look, where's the booster supposed to grab on the sides? No body. The wheels just stick out. All right. Track time. Let's see. First chance. Hey, made it through a booster. Two boosters. Let's give him a second chance. <laughs> Same place. Third chance. Hmm, this looks familiar. He made it through a couple boosters, but let's go ahead and turn this one down so this way he's not going so fast in that back corner. Well, he definitely worked better than I thought he was going to, but I'm going to move on. I said there were some great cars and I meant it. The 4 GT, it's actually the 4 GT LM. They did it in Gulf colors. Love that release. We're gonna be doing that one. Here you have Corvette Stingray. Nice, nice shiny red. You have the 66 Ford 427 Fairlane. Talk about flames, beautiful. I'll show you up close in a moment. And we're gonna finish with Chicken right after this break. The Ford GT is one of my favorite models to collect. This is the GTLM version. Love the golf colors. Let's get it on the track. Low and sleek. Great for the long straightaways. So far he's handling everything very well. And it's a smooth run to the finish. The Corvette Stingray is a classic Hot Wheels model. It's been around for a long time. Let's see how he does on the track. He's not quite as low profile as the Ford GT, but maybe he'll do fine. Almost. Let's give him a second chance. Oh, spin out. Right where those other ones were spinning out. Oh, again, another time. I wonder if there's something else going on over here. I use my finger just kind of feel to see if there's any bumps. Uh-oh, what's that right there? When you look closely at this angle, you can see that the centerpiece right there, the centerpiece kind of sticks up a little bit and the cars nick it. Oh well, let's see if he can make it anyways. Set, go! Well, he didn't get very far. 
Try again. Oh, he flips upside down in the curve. Let's try him again. He's a little top heavy and he's been wiping out in the same places that other cars have. Let me see if I can adjust this piece of track or actually the booster. Maybe the booster's a little bit uh, off. Yeah, look at that. That looks more straight. Let's see if that helps. Nope, same thing. Now let's move the track off of the booster. I've done quite a bit of adjusting to try to get him to work. I don't know how much more I can do. Well, that's it. Next, 66 Ford, 427 Fairlane. Look at those flames. And when you put the light on them, oh man, the paint job is just sweet. Do you have this one? I got a couple, to be honest with you. Really, really like this car. And with this paint job, it's a winner. But of course, paint jobs don't have anything to do with how well it does on the track. Second chance. Oh, he was doing so well. Got a little squirrely in the curve and came out of the booster crooked. I don't know, he might make it, but it seems like he's having issues. Ah, uh, again. Ah, uh, again. Okay, that's enough. It's Chicane. Chicane. Yeah, he's good on the track. He's a former Accelerators model. Do you think he's going to make it on his first try? <laughs> nope. Let's turn down this booster. He doesn't need so much thrust. While we're here, let's go ahead and turn over Great Gatsby. Let's try him again. Oh no, you too? Oh, yeah. Out of 24 cars, 16 of them were successful. That's a lot of cars. Of course, it's because I just had long straightaways. Unfortunately, the Nissan Fairlady Z didn't make it. Dogzilla and Great Gatsby did not make it either. Yeah, Back to the Future hover mode didn't even fit. The Toyota Supra had problems in the curves. So did the 66 Ford 427 Fairlane. A couple did go over the edge, like the Corvette down there. And there's the 52 Hudson Hornet. This layout did allow some cars to have some track time that wouldn't normally do well. Nothing but straightaways, no loops. By the way, those white things are actually the new track builder clamps. They double as bridges. Oh yeah, look at this mess. There you go. You know what that means? That's a pile of fun right there. And if you like some more fun videos, thank you for watching. And have fun with your cars. Bye bye.